Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dart and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Um, we are back with another episode of this SC300 exam prep uh, YouTube series. Um, so this is going to be um, episode 4 I believe and I think we're going to be looking at external identities. Before we get into that though, let me say hello and welcome my co-star, my co-partner, Dwayne. Hi Dwayne. Hey Shabazz, hey everybody. How are you doing today? I am good, how are you? I'm doing well. Excellent. I just the, the the sort of backing and the support we've been getting from this series has been amazing, hasn't it, Dwayne? It's just great to see so many people enjoying our content. Yes. Yeah, always uh always really great to see uh the community react positively to uh to what's being out there. So uh so thanks everybody for uh for your support and your likes and your uh your subscription your subscribing to uh to the content and uh we'll keep I will keep doing it for you. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. It's good fun. We're having a we're having a blast doing it. So, um, so yeah, as I mentioned, we're we're going to get straight into to this uh, module. Um, so obviously by now I'm sure you know who me and Dwayne are. So we'll skip the intros. Um, if you don't, you know, if you want me to bring those back, I'm happy to do so. But <laughs> you, you, I'd like to think you know who we are by now. Um, so we're still on module one. As I, I think I mentioned in the last episode, um, there has been a you know the Microsoft decided to change the. The whole, some of the wording and some of the the format of the exam, um, and and where where different topics are. Obviously now it's called implementing identities in Azure AD is module one, so that name has quite changed. Uh, so in this section, in this episode, we are going to be covering part one of implementing and managing external identities. So hopefully we can get through and cover manage external collaboration settings in Azure AD. And then look at invite external users, so individually or in bulk. And then my good friend Dwayne will cover off a, a good demo of looking at those external collaboration settings and what we can do there. And a quick demo of just how to invite a guest. So, you know, just um, how you can create a guest, you can invite them. Okay. So if we get stuck straight in, what what I like to do in general in, in my in my work and in my in my and I'm sure you I think you're the same as well, Dwayne. I like to use diagrams. I like to do like a grammatical view of what we're talking about. So that's what I want to do here as well. So let's try and explain external identities. Let's do a bit of a diagram, okay? So here we have our, our tenant. This is us. This is our resource organization. And we have our Azure AD. We then have our resources. Could be databases, could be applications, okay? And we have our admin or our user. What they then do is, and as we'll see in the demo, they send a B2B invitation out, okay? So that goes to the external identity. Okay, so that's the partner tenant, okay? So that could be um, anyone who, someone we're working with in a different Azure AD tenancy. So they have all their, and it could be a social media, it could be LinkedIn, or it could be um, Facebook. And again, that's something we're gonna touch on later. So that is our partner or our vendor or our supplier, okay? When they receive that, they can accept that and they go through a process of redemption of redeeming that redemption in i mean redeeming that that sort of token and that invitation or they can do the self self service sign up as well that will then create a b2b user in a collaboration object within our tenant which in turn then gives them access to those applications as a b2b user okay so that's how the sort of from a high level, how the process goes. Okay, we are going to look in a bit more detail about that. But let, let's actually just go through a couple of key points. I just wanted to go around, you know, just just to touch on. So the first thing is, I mentioned it a few times, B2B collaboration. Well, Shabazz, Dwayne, what the hell is B2B collaboration? Okay, so, <laughs> so it's a capability of Azure AD um, essentially partnering with external identities and it lets us collaborate. So it lets us let those users and partners outside our organization access resources within our organization, okay? Uh, and it allows them to use their own credentials as well. So they don't need a credentials, they don't need um, a UPN within our tenancy, okay? A user object is created for that B2B collaboration user in the same directory as your own employees, okay? And as, as Dwayne's shown a couple of times with demos, you can see that single pane of glass, you see all users in there, guest users and members are all kept in there. Second thing I just wanted to touch on is this whole premise of a guest user, okay? And we've mentioned this a few times now. 
Um, so Azure Active Directory B2B Collaboration is a feature within external identities that lets you invite guest users. So anyone you invite, they are classed as a guest user. And it's essentially, like I think I, I might have mentioned before, it's, it's, it's someone that's not within your organization. But if you want them to have access to applications or resources in your organization, you can invite them and they're classed as guest users and, and not members. Okay, so a, that's one thing we need to define between. So what I want to do now is just look at a bit of a hierarchical view of, of, of how and, and what a guest user can do and the different types of guest users as well. Because there are different types, they, they are housed in different areas, okay, externally. So here is our guest user, okay. Their, their, their user type is known as guest within Azure AD. But then they have different places where they're located, okay. So... Located, you can have a user that's located in an external directory or you can have a, a guest user that's located in an org directory, okay? So stay on the left-hand side for a second. Let's talk about guest users located in an external directory. Okay, so this could be a, a Microsoft account or a external Azure AD. If we move back to the right-hand side, when we're looking at located in org directories, that can be a directory synced account or it can be a cloud only account. And what those bottom things are known as are cloud, uh, not cloud, account states, okay? Now, I wanna be going into a bit more detail about the different cloud states as well now. So let's discuss, a cloud, uh, let's discuss account state one, which is that external Azure AD that we mentioned in the previous slide. So this is where an object is homed in the external Azure AD tenant. So, so cloud based identity. And when we see this in our Azure tenant, they'll show up as a guest user, okay? Now, to, because they're, ho they're housed and homed in an external Azure AD and represented as a guest user uh, when we're inviting or in an inviting organization, in this case, the B2B user signs in by using their Azure AD account, so their UPN. So say I'm inviting Dwayne uh, to my IMIT geek tenancy, he will not sign in with an IMIT Geek account. It'll be a, you know, um, DwayneNatwick.org or DwayneNatwick.com account or whatever is his domain, hyperscale.com. Okay, so that's just to, to, to ha you know, the, the whole sort of redemption process. And we're going to be going through in a bit more detail the whole redeeming process as well and how that goes in a bit more detail. Let's just move on to account state two. So this is a, a Microsoft account that we saw earlier. And these are, these are located in the Microsoft sort of tenancy and shown as a guest user again in Azure AD. So again, homed in Microsoft or other account and represented as a guest user in your host organization. In this case, the guest user signs in with their Microsoft account. So this can be an Outlook.com, Live.com, Hotmail.co.uk, Hotmail.com, etc. Okay. And again, you can also have Google as well. So Google is also another sort of identity um, similar to this that you can have as well. The invited user's identity is created as a Microsoft account in the inviting organization directory during the offer redemption. Okay, so it's, it's classes, you see it as a Microsoft account as well. Let's move on to the third state, which is a directory synced, or I've called it DirSync, but directory synced account. So the object, object type is located or homed in an on-premises, I say on-premises active directory, but that can be a domain controller in Azure as well. So it's just, it's housed in a domain controller, okay? And it synchronizes through Azure AD Connect to Azure AD. And that's all done on the um, partner side, okay? So this is still not on the inviting side yet. So this is on the partner side, their account is on-premises AD and it's synced with their Azure AD tenancy. And what you do then is you, look, you they, they utilize Azure AD sync to, to um, and then, and then you, from your Azure AD tenancy, you send an invitation, and then they again a class as user type is equals guest within um, your inviting tenancy. Okay, so even though they're a synchronized object, you can still invite them to Azure B two B because you're sending that invite to the object that's in Azure AD, their Azure AD tenancy, not their on-premises tenancy. Okay, finally, I just want to touch on that fourth account state that we saw, which was cloud only. So this is probably the simplest of them. This is located in the Azure AD partner tenancy. So 
So it's cloud to cloud. And again, the user type equals guest in this case as well. And, and again, they have that whole redemption process where you send them an invite, be it bulk or individual, and they need to redeem that. So I just want to look at a couple of scenarios when it comes to external identity. So one common one is collaboration. Okay, so, you know, inviting somebody to have access to your exchange online or OneDrive or SharePoint or Teams, inviting them as a guest into your tenant. Okay, and Duane's going to show some cool collaboration stuff and, and the different permissions you can set um, later on in the demo. We then uh, have uh, when we're, we're intended for suppliers, partners and vendors. Okay, so this is where we might be working on a project with a, a partner or say we've got, um, you know, you want one of your vendors, say Veeam or Dell or something like that to have access to something within your tenancy, you can have that external partnership as well. We then want, you know, you can provide support for work accounts um, or your know, school accounts or email addresses. And that's where you have sort of SAML and FS Federation providers as well that you can be support as well. So that's for more kind of single sign-on support. And then we have external user management, okay? So this is what we kind of already touched on, which is guest users managing the same directory as your member users, okay? So we've already kind of touched on that. Again, single sign-on as well. So we can, uh, yeah, yeah, you can have um, your guest members or your partners um, doing single sign-on the same way you would have your members do single sign-on. And one thing to note is that the sort of compliance and security is all managed by the host tenant. So when you're inviting people into your tenancy, they, that guest account has to apply to your compliance and your security, regardless of what's in there, because in their own tenancy, okay? As, as long as they're a guest in your tenancy, they have to apply to what, what you've set in your security and compliance. So just a little bit on, on again, I mentioned that this whole, so you know, I like to do diagrams and explain things through diagrams. We're just going to look at that invite process of when we get invited an external user, okay, quickly. So we have our corporate tenant here. We have Azure AD and we have on-premises. We have some cloud apps as well. And from our Azure AD tenancy, what we do is we send that initial invitation, that's step one. We send that to our guest user, okay? They will have a, a number of different devices. Could be a tablet, could be a laptop, mobile device, or you know some sort of virtual machine. Once they receive that invitation, um, they can, depending on what sort of account they have or what sort of account you send it to, could be Facebook or LinkedIn or some sort of email address. They can then redeem that, follow your sort of compliance and security, in this case, MFA, and then they can start to access the different resources, be it on-premises resources or cloud apps, depending on what you've given them access to. Okay. So let's look at some invite methods here. So the first one is we can create guest members uh, account manually. And again, that's something that we're, I'm sure um, Duane will show in the, in the demo. Or you can do a bulk join via CSV file. And again, that's something you download from the Azure AD portal. And you can then... Um, uh, send to multiple users at a time. So before we get into the demo, I just want to quickly look at some self-service guest app access as well. So with guest access, you can enable self-service management. So it allows them to manage their sort of own account, like change their own passwords, etc., make changes to maybe the department they're in or whatever, you know, certain tasks like that. You can also create groups and assign them to, to, to applications. So if you want a group for just your guest users and assign that to an application, you can do that as well. And finally, you can also do the self-service for configuring apps as well. So again, it just creates, minimizes the sort of management overhead with your guest users. Um, and obviously it creates less, um, more time for your support team. So we're not dealing with so many calls just to do with guest users. So now, Again, I'm tired of talking. If you don't mind, Dwayne, I will hand over to you for for demo time. Yes, hand it on, hand it on over. Uh, so I'm already in the users uh, the users screen uh, within Azure Active Directory. I'm not going to bore everybody with stepping through that. You get there from Azure Active Directory. Uh, you can find that up here in the in the list, or you can search for Azure Active Directory. Uh, however you want, but in the user list, 
uh, and just kind of show a little bit of what um, what Shabazz was talking about in the uh, in the diagrams. You see, I have different member types in here. Um, I have uh, this is this is my account, uh, my Outlook account, and you can see it's a Microsoft account. Uh, I have a couple of users in here. They're uh, uh, some of my co-organizers for our user group uh, that uh, that use their own Azure AD tenant to uh, uh, to join uh, the Captain Hyperscaler tenant. So that that is giving their own external ID. Um, we have some uh, some member tenants in here. Uh, as well as as some guests uh, that uh, that are still utilizing on Microsoft identity as well. So uh, so they're within uh, within the on Microsoft uh, .com tenant of Captain Hyperscaler. So uh, so they're going to have to utilize and to uh, utilize a password on uh, on my particular tenant to join rather than utilizing. Uh, the uh, the password. You know, I use my Microsoft account password, or uh, or these external Azure AD, or using their own Azure AD to authenticate and be authorized onto uh, onto my tent. So that's how how those work in different ways. So if we go back, uh, and I already have the external identities within here. So how does that how does that all work, and how do we build that? Uh, build those different relationships, you know, and uh, what Shabazz had mentioned, he had mentioned the, the business to business. We build some cross tenant access uh, within here for B to B to B and B to C collaboration. And this is all the, the B, uh, what, you know, what the organizations are, we can add an organization. So if I wanted to, uh, wanted everybody, uh, you know, we have a partnership with, uh, with, I am IT geek as uh, as maybe my managed services provider, and I want to build that organizational relationship and allow uh, allow all of Shaz and his support engineers to be able to uh, to access resources on uh, my tenant. I can add his organization in here, and then it'll use uh, use uh, the I am uh, I am IT geek credentials to begin, and they can and. Uh, we can enforce our own policies and give them access to what what they need to have access to. We can set up all of those settings. Uh, you see, you know, pretty wide open right now with the inbound access. We can uh, we can lock and allow uh, what we need uh, within here as well. So you know, you can see, you know, collaborations all allowed, direct connect uh, not allowed. We uh, we can set up trust settings uh, within the environment. So. A lot of power things that we can do in here. Uh, identity providers, if we want to uh, to allow people to use their Google account to access maybe even our website and uh, and access uh, resources within our environment, we can curate uh, that provider and allow it to, when somebody comes in and has a Gmail account, uh, it will it can federate and pop up their Gmail login page rather than a Microsoft account page. And it'll be the same, uh, you know, a similar feel to them logging into their own Google account. Um, Facebook is another or uh, other SAML WS Fed type of identity providers like LinkedIn is another one that, uh, you know, that's popular, you know, Twitter, all of those. If you ever go to a website and it says, you know, create an account or use one of your, uh, your existing accounts and has all the logo, all the logos and icons for uh, for those types of of accounts. That's really, uh, really exactly what this is doing for external identities. It's providing that that federation. They've set up that web account uh, to uh, to allow you to uh, for ease of use use your use your own uh, existing entity providers. To log in rather than having to all you know constantly add in your information, um, you know as a you know your account then hopefully has in like MFA uh, enabled to it so that if uh, if the the security of that particular website isn't uh, isn't up to uh, up to par uh, with your requirements uh, that that it uh, is protecting your you're, you're protecting your own IDs but keep that in mind. Uh, external collaboration settings so. Uh, this really is how we set up our guest users and how they get invited, what they have access to, uh, what they can do in terms of self-service within our environment as well. Um, you can see, you know, I have 
Uh, and it kind of gives you a, a little bit of guidance here in terms of what's inclusive, you know, what provides the most inclusive versus most restricted versus, versus something in the middle. Um, in, guest invite said we want anyone within the organization to be allowed to invite guests or only certain admin roles uh, to do that. We can do that as well. And again, you know, we can set up self-service options uh, and, and also uh, have restrictions collaboration. Uh, where, you know, where we can deny certain domains, you know, if we don't want anybody from our competition to gain access to our environment, we can deny those invitations. So, uh, you know, it gives us, gives us some flexibility there. So, and if I, you know, if we do uh, most restrictive allow invitations for only specific domains, that's the most restrictive. Um, I'm not going to change any, uh, change anything in my collaboration settings right now, but those are all ways that we can, uh, we can manage and monitor our external identities. And how do we get users and groups uh, into our environment? We invite them. And uh, I showed this briefly when we were talking about creating a user. It's very easy to invite somebody. You just need their email address. Uh, you can put a note in. Uh, you set up a usage location if you want. Uh, we can do that by single user at a time or, again, like we can with bulk creating users, we can do a bulk bite uh, by downloading a CSV file uh, and give it a chance to open this file. And there we go. Uh, we have our template here. A uh, lot less information in here than, uh, than, the, uh, than the user create. Uh, we just need to uh, set up and provide the email address, um, it, uh, a URL, that is going to be uh, redirected for the user. It's going to be part of that invitation, um, and can send also a uh, invitation message. And we can customize that uh, very, and then very easily copy and paste it. Copy and paste, you know, create users that we need to invite. Save this, and then upload it. So very powerful uh, and capable tools. You can also use if you're if you're more comfortable with PowerShell, you can use PowerShell as well. But you know, having a spreadsheet is also is very easy. And if you're managing and you know managing and uh, and administering the uh, the creation of users and invitation users, but if somebody says, "Hey, I got this. Uh, I need these users invite." Uh, they can provide, you know, say, okay, put it on a spreadsheet for me, and then you can copy, you can manipulate that spreadsheet to the proper format uh, and make it a CSV and upload it here. Uh, you know, we can just select that, uh, select that spreadsheet and open. Uh, it's not valid. I don't have anything in here, so it actually does a validation process when you upload it for the submit button turns blue. So I think that is everything for this module, Shabazz. So back to you. Yep, great. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, great, great demo again. Thank you very much. And as you can see, we're getting a bit more, bit more in depth as we get through the modules. Again, we're still the first module is very, very sort of um, high level. I think when we start doing the high, uh, the hybrid stuff, that's where we're going to really got get technical. It's going to be really heavy demo based. So. I think we've got one more episode, we've got another episode on the, the collaboration, um, external collaboration, and then we're going to move on to um, hybrid identities. So that's very exciting. So yeah, thank you again, Dwayne. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, thank you for your continued support. You know, we're having a great, great fun doing this and we really hope people do find this useful and pass the exam for, after this. Um, both our socials will be in the description. Dwayne's book link will also be in the description. You know, by all means, buy that book and follow that as you're following us great combination um and yeah please do subscribe so you keep up to date with, with all the stuff that we're doing so thank you very much to everybody thank you Dwayne, and until next time goodbye thanks everybody